Welcome back, and we have a great guest today here today, and that is Debbie Campbell. Debbie, nice to see you. Thanks, Jason. Nice to be here. And you are the daughter of the great Glenn Campbell, uh, and we're just going to talk today a little bit about your dad, and uh, how did uh, Glenn Campbell get started in the room? Well, you know, he, um, he left home, he moved to Albuquerque, and he was playing with my Uncle Dick Bills, and uh which was his he, his uh aunt judy was married to dick so that would have been his uncle my great uncle and he was playing in albuquerque and then he was there for a couple of years you know he married my mom and then they divorced and then he married billy and they moved to la and uh, he became a session player for the wrecking crew and he played on many 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 rec records i mean through the 60s um so that's where he started. He, that's where when he moved to LA and got his uh, career started, pretty much. Why do you think his music is so special? Because everybody just smiles when Rhinestone Cowboy comes on. I know. I mean, Dad could sing the telephone book for crying out loud. I mean, he could remake any song that's ever out there and make it his own. But he had so many great hits with Phoenix, Wichita Lineman, Galveston. You know, I mean, Dad was Dad was a true balladeer. He loved ballads, as I do. But Rhinestone Cowboy was a big hit for him. You know, I mean, it pretty much said his story, pretty much. Yeah, Dad, Dad had such a great voice, not only being a great musician, but his voice was just very soothing and the tone of it. And he was an all-around good old Arkansas boy, you know? Seems like whether it's on stage or on TV, you can tell he's just having a, a fun time. Did he have a fun time doing it? Absolutely. You know, and he just, uh, he liked being a part of something. He really didn't like being the front man, like being by himself. He liked having the band behind him, the orchestra behind him. He liked being a part of the group more so than being the standout um, kind of guy. Well, let's talk about you. Did you get involved in that music business since your dad was in it? Well, I didn't really do that. Um, I think I tinkered around with a group or two when I, I actually lived with my mom. I didn't grow up with dad. So I saw dad in the summers, you know, when school was out and everything. And, uh, but when I moved to LA in the seventies, cause I graduated from high school in England and my mom and stepdad still had two years over there. So I went to live with dad in LA because I really couldn't work over in England. And so I went to live with dad and um, I was thrown into that scene. You know, I was a military brat living on military bases and now I'm thrown into Hollywood. You know, I mean, I remember the first party they had at the house on the hill. I mean, Lauren Green was there, Michael Landon. I mean, I mean, it was like crazy and I'm like so nervous, you know. And um, so I started tinkering around. I uh, started singing with a group called Sky People. And they were more kind of rock. I mean, we did a lot of Aerosmith, that type of music. Uh, Mark Moreland, I don't know if you're familiar with him. He was a part of that group. And, uh, and you know, and then I really, I really wasn't into the, I, I wasn't pursuing a career per se. I was just try, a teenage kid trying to find my way in life. I worked in a t-shirt shop down on Sunset Strip, you know, um, that kind of stuff. And then I, when my mom and stepdad moved from England to Montana, I'd had enough of Hollywood. So I moved to Montana, uh, met my then, my ex-husband, who I've since divorced. Um, and so I didn't really connect back with dad till 1987, when we moved from uh, Colorado to Phoenix. My ex-husband got out of the military. We moved to Phoenix. I wanted my kids to be around a grandparent. My ex's family were in uh, Nebraska. We didn't want to move to Nebraska. So we moved to Arizona and dad was performing at the state fair in Phoenix in 1987. And he said, I said, dad, I want to sing with you. He goes, okay, what do you want to sing? And I'm like, oh my gosh, now I got to pick something, you know? So I, uh, that was my first time ever singing with dad on stage it was at the fair here in Phoenix and he liked it and I liked it. I, I, thought, oh my gosh, I want to sing, you know. So then from there on, I became a central part of his touring from 1987 till 2011. So I was on the road with him for over 25 years. I traveled the world with him, Australia, New Zealand, all over England, Scotland, Ireland, Wales, you know, 
um, for 25 years, yeah, as, as well as the United States. Did you ever write any, any uh, songs? No, well, actually, I, I was going to say, no, I haven't, but actually I have. Uh, when I would go and visit Dad in Arkansas, and excuse me, I didn't mean to say Arkansas. Dad was in the home in Nashville, and uh, so I would go and visit him, and I would always stay with a, at a friend's house, and he's a songwriter. And so he'd say, hey, Deb, when you coming in? I go, I'm only two flights away because I'd go Phoenix, Dallas, Nashville. And so he started pinning something down only two flights away. And then when I went and I was staying at the house with them, we started going over all the words and everything. And so we sort of collaborated. And so we did write a song called Only Two Flights Away. And so we've copyrighted it. We haven't recorded it, which I'm hoping to in the next year, hopefully, get that recorded, even though dad's passed away, but it said a lot about what it meant to, to go and visit dad and what we were doing while we were visiting and, you know, stuff like that. So, so that's my first song that I can say I've actually co-wrote. Where did your dad, uh, since you toured all over, did he have a special place that he liked to perform or that came Well, of on? course, he loved going to Arkansas because mm -hmm. the family was all there and the family could come and they could join in and it would be like a family affair. But one of the most special places that I think dad and I really performed was in Branson because we would stay there for weeks on end. I mean, I actually lived at Branson for five years because he had his theater and I'm a flight attendant. I have been for 34 years. And for me to perform in dad's theater for three weeks, but be able to fulfill my commitment to my airline job, I would have never seen my kids, you know? So my ex-husband and I, we picked up and moved to Branson and we lived there for five years. That way I could sing at dad's theater and then I could come back to Phoenix and you know do my commitment to my job, which was America West at that time. And so that worked out, you know? And dad loved Branson because we wouldn't perform two shows a day sometimes, so he could golf all day, take a nap, then go do a show, get up the next day, golf all day, take a nap, do another show. And so it fit in with what, what he loved to do and his passion other than playing the guitar and singing was golf. It was very sad when he passed away you know, and uh, he passed away from Alzheimer's and uh, every family is uh, affected by that it's one way or the other. How did you deal with it at that time? It was really hard. Um, of course, a lot of stuff happened when the, he got the Alzheimer diagnosis. A lot of things changed, which shouldn't have, because when you have Alzheimer's, you kind of want to keep everything the same for that patient. And my uh, stepmom, of course, fired his band of 25 years. Then she let me go because she was trying to, to preserve what years dad had left to get her kids into the business per se. And so she put their band as dad's backup band. And then the parts that I played in dad's show, her kids became a part of that part. And so it was really a, um, it was really a hard, hard couple of years there, I guess. Um, but, and it was really hard. I found out that he was put in a home through the media, um, which was not okay with me. Um, and it, it was very hard those last couple of years. Not pretty. It was not a pretty picture. Because I think they did a documentary about it, didn't they? They did. Okay. Yeah, they, uh, it was only not supposed to be that long of a tour, but they ended up touring quite a few years with that. So now let's come to the part you came up and I now have an online program and it's the <laughs> Debbie Campbell Good Time Hour, is that correct? It's the Debbie Campbell Good Time Show. I kind yeah. of, you know, dad was the Glenn Campbell Good Time Hour. Well, some shows don't last an hour and I don't have ads and I don't have, you know, stuff like that coming into play. And it's a whole different world than it was when dad was doing the Good Time Hour. I mean, right now we're right in the middle of a pandemic. People can't really go out into the studio and do shows and stuff like that. And I haven't been flying much because the airlines have had to decrease their flying, you know, because of the pandemic. So we came up with, well, why not do the Debbie Campbell Good Time Show? And I thought, well, this is perfect because so many artists aren't doing anything right now. They're just sitting at home. I mean, I'm sure they're doing interviews, but through the computer. So I started Debbie Campbell Good Time Show and I get to interview people that I've worked with or haven't worked with, but have worked with dad. And it's not necessarily doing interviews of people that have worked with dad. I'm interviewing people for their careers 
And if dad comes in to the conversation, that's great. But if not, that's okay too. You know, I mean, it's more or less about the artists that I'm interviewing. And then uh, where can people uh, see the good, uh, the, your program? They could go on YouTube and it's on the Debbie Campbell Good Time Show, or they could go to my website, which is debbiecampbellmusic.com. And there's a link up at the top where it says bio schedule about all that. And there's a link for the Good Time Show and they can just click on that and it'll take them right to it. Is there a guest that you're looking at that isn't scheduled that you'd like to get uh, that's like the shoot? Oh my gosh, I would love to have Barbara Streisand mm -hmm. because I did a tribute album to dad. In fact, you can go to my website, Debbie Campbell Music, and order that if you'd like. But I did a tribute album to dad while he was in the Alzheimer home. And Barbara Streisand was mine and dad's favorite singer. So I did do memories on the CD as a tribute to dad. Um, Dad and I love Barbara Streisand, you know. Um, so yes, that would be like my oh my gosh, over the top, you know, ultimate interview. But all right, well, we thank you so much, Debbie Campbell, for taking the time to talk with us. We'll definitely tune into your program and any oh, other thanks, works. That, Jason. Any thank other works that so come much. along, we'll definitely support. And thank you so much for talking with us. No, thank you for having me. I appreciate it.